So what we did is we derived an equation d theta dx. We derived the equation for d theta dx without anywhere involving the boundary condition of the uh, inviscid equivalent flow, right? Because we are combining two equations, the mass conservation equation and momentum conservation equation. By combining these two, we get just the evolution of the thickness itself. So I can combine them, 2 theta plus delta star, right? Divide by UE, DUE, DX, plus 2 CF. Okay, this is good. So we have an equation for, for theta. And uh, because I know what UE is, I know what theta is. I, I know, uh, I, I, can, I can solve an equation for theta if I know the skin friction coefficient. Do we know delta star? Do we know delta star? That's a good question. So we don't know delta star. And we also don't know the skin friction coefficient. Right? So these are the things we don't know. We did derive an equation, but it is something that is commonly encountered in reduced order modeling. We derived the equation that is unclosed. So this is one of example is a unclosed equation, meaning that it has more variables than equations. But such an equation may be closed, so that's a commonly referred to as a closure problem, by somehow modeling the additional variables as functions of the resolved variables. So here, theta is resolved variable. OK. So if theta, if, if theta combined with, let's say, DOE dx and CF, uh, sorry, combined with DOE dx can determine the other terms. If, for example, delta star can be written as a function of theta and, uh, let's say, UE and uh, DUE dx, and what else? Are there other unclosed variables? Yes. What if CF can also be written as a function of theta, UE, DUE dx? Then what do we have? We have a closed equation. We have an ODE for theta that can be solved provided I have a, a profile for the UE. Or CF. Hmm? Or CF. Or CF. Uh, yes, if I have CF, then I can back out uh, UE from this relationship, I guess. Right, that's right. But usually it's uh, is that I I'm provided a UE and I I model CF. But you, you're right. You can think of this the other way too. If you have CF, and then somehow you can model delta star as a function of theta and CF, you have to also model both. Um, yeah, I guess you you have to also model DUE DX as a function of theta and CF. Then you can solve two coupled equations. Uh, is that right? You can solve two coupled equations, one for theta, the other for UE. I have never seen that being done, but I, in principle, that can be tried. Where, where do you get your UE from, though? My UE is, so we are going to be talking about how to get UE uh, starting next week. So UE is provided by, the invis by an inviscous flow solver. And in the in viscous flow solver, that solves my UI, right? I need to provide a boundary condition. And the in viscous flow solver usually takes a no, uh, no, flow, no, uh, no flow through boundary condition, right? But in this case, in a no flow through boundary condition, it just means the one normal velocity is equal to zero. Mathematically, 
the invisit flow solver is equally well defined. If I tell the flow solver that I have a non-zero one normal velocity that is given. So in this case, remember we have the mass conservation equation that actually tells me what is vi, right? It's equal to dm dx, or it is equal to a combination of 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 these, right? And remember, if I solve for the equation for theta, and I can model delta star as a function of theta and uh, uh, ue, right? I can provide this delta star and also d delta star dx to compute a vi, a boundary condition for the inviscous flow solver. And then the inviscous flow solver can give me my ue that I need. And for that UE, I can also then compute this delta star, I compute the VI. So, so you can see this is a two-way coupling process. In order, in order for the inviscous flow solver to solve its equation, it needs boundary conditions. And for boundary conditions, I need the VI. In order for me to have the VI, I need the delta star. In order for me to have delta star, I need theta. And in order for me to have theta, I need to solve for this equation to get it and in order for me to have this equation i need my ue so this completes a full circle it's it can be iterative that's right it can be iterative and the iterative procedure of solving one equation providing the boundary condition for the other and solve it and then go back is called the loosely coupled system right so basically you solve one equation to full convergence and then provides the input for the other equation, solve it to full convergence, and go back and forth. Unfortunately, for this set of equations between the inviscous and viscous coupling, the, the loosely coupled system either doesn't converge or converges very slowly. So in here, we are going to be using, starting from next week, we are going to be using a strongly coupled system, which means we are going to be doing something very similar to solving the three coupled equations we solved last week. But in, instead of these three coupled equations, we are solving two big systems at once. One big system governs the relationship between... One, one big system is in, in this flow solver. It governs the relationship between the boundary condition, which is V, and the resulting solution on the boundary, which is UE, right? So from a tangential velocity, uh, from a normal velocity, it gives me a tangential velocity. That is the role of the inviscous flow solver seen from the boundary layer solver. And the boundary layer solver seen from the inviscous flow solver is that I give you a tangential velocity, UE. You are responsible for giving me the normal or well normal velocity v so these are basically having uh, two rows and uh, they basically you have two coupled equations both involving both both are involving uh, v and ue so these put together you have exactly the same number of equations as on nodes and you can solve it as a huge coupled system and uh, the fact that we have to solve this big coupled system is also why we often does not take the approach we use the on Monday, which is solving the full uh, boundary layer equation, right? Because it's not just the solving that boundary layer equation once that we need. We need to solve it again and again in the iteration to convergence of the coupled system.